One of the more common pieces of Git advice that many a blog article has been written about is to keep your commits atomic. So what does that mean? That's what I wanna talk about in this video and I'll show you an example. In this context, the word atomic does not mean you know having to do with an atom, but rather of something being irreducible or of a, um, I guess, a base unit, a single component uh, that makes up a larger system. So if that doesn't mean anything to you, just read the first paragraph here. When possible, your commits should encompass a single feature, a single change, a fix. In other words, try and keep each commit focused on a single thing. And this is important, uh, especially if you're working with code and you're writing code, you're adding features or fixing bugs. It's super important to keep things as atomic as possible, to keep each commit focused on one thing. Again, that does not mean one file. That means one feature, one thing that you worked on. So let me, let me show you an example. Here, uh, I've got my first novel repository going still, and I'm gonna do two things this morning. First of all, uh, I'm gonna add some inspiration, some visual inspiration. Since I'm such a, I guess, a budding writer, I wanna have a little mood board. So I've actually downloaded a couple of photos that I wanna use, just, you know, 1920s-esque photos. This, this, this is the best I could find uh, with all the copyright restrictions I have to worry about. So uh, I'm gonna make a new folder in here. I'll just do it through Finder. I'll call it mood board. And then I'm just gonna put those images in there. Okay, so now I have that folder in there. Uh, and of course, if I type git status, git is gonna tell me, hey, there's a whole new directory mood board that I see, but I'm not tracking. So I keep working on my, my novel uh, and I decide, you know, I'm not sure if I like the name Gatsby. I think I wanna change Gatsby to be Catsby with a C. So I'm gonna change that across all my files. How am I gonna do that? Well, with VS Code, it's super simple. If I go to this little icon here, there's also a shortcut I can never remember. I can search for Gatsby and uh, I can replace it across all files. So it found it in four different files, right? The characters file, chapter one, chapter two, the outline, and I'll replace it with Catsby like that. And then I can click this button. However you do this, if you are following along, I'm just making a change across a bunch of files. So it's asking me, are you sure you wanna replace 18 occurrences across four files? Sure. All right, so now we see it changed here. Catsby in the characters file, uh, somewhere in here, I'm sure, here we go. When I looked once more for Catsby, he had vanished. So we can trust that it changed across all those files. So now I'm ready to start committing. It's uh, later in the day, or maybe I'm gonna take a lunch break. So I type git status, and we have a couple of things, right? We have four files that have been modified, plus a whole new directory that contains a bunch of files inside, well, three image files. So I'm not just gonna add all of this to one single commit that breaks this rule or this pattern of wanting to keep each commit focused on a single thing. Here, it's very easy for me to break this up and just say, okay, my first commit, the order doesn't really matter, but one commit I'll make will be around changing Gatsby to Catsby. That was one thing that I did. And then the other commit that I'll make will be around adding to my mood board or creating my mood board. So why don't I start by just adding chapter one and chapter two and the characters and outline. So I, notice I did not do git add dot because I don't want the mood board. So now if I type git status, I've got these four things staged for my next commit. And now I'm gonna commit. So git commit and those four files, those four changes, they all had to do with changing Gatsby to Catsby. So I'd go with, you know, replace Gatsby or how about rename Gatsby to Catsby. Okay, I type git status, and we still have some uncommitted changes, some stuff I've worked on that git does not know about. Uh, it's a whole directory, that's what the slash means. So if I wanted to, I could add specific files from inside of there, git add mood board slash, and then I could type the name of one of those files, like Rolls, it's a Rolls Royce image. So I could do it that way, or I can just add the entire directory like this. And I'll just add the entire thing, now, if I type git status, you can see 
all three image files have been added. They are going to be committed whenever I commit. So I'll commit now, git commit dash m. Um, what should I do? How about start off or create mood board? Sure, create mood board. There we go. So I just made two separate commits instead of one larger commit following this idea, keeping our commits atomic breaking them down into some sort of single irreducible unit or piece instead of having like a multi-purpose commit that just includes everything you did at once break it down into smaller pieces this matters a lot when you're working on code uh, especially when you're working with a team of people and you may need to undo some of the things that you write you may introduce a bug at some point and if you boiled in a whole bunch of changes into one commit rolling back that commit could undo a ton of work. But if you kept your commits atomic, single purpose, then if somebody needs to undo one of them, you don't lose all that other work. It also makes your code easier to review uh, if you do or when you do code reviews. Uh, it's just generally a practice you want to follow. Group things together in a way that makes sense. Keep things small, but don't just break them up to be as tiny as possible. Keep them focused on a single thing.